Nestled in the foothills of the Ozarks in north central Arkansas is the water sports paradise known as Greer's Ferry Lake. The project totals more than 40,745 acres with more than 8,951 acres of land, 31,794 acres of water, and 4,645 acres of flowage easement land. There are 276 miles of shoreline at Greer's Ferry Lake. The Army Corps of Engineers began construction of the dam in March 1959 to reduce flooding for those living downstream. The dam was completed in December 1962 and dedicated by President Kennedy on October 3, 1963. The powerhouse and switchyard, which provide clean, renewable electricity, were completed in July 1964. Parks were developed in the 1960s. The lake is best known for being one of the nation's finest fishing and boating destinations. The Little Red River, tailwaters of Greer's Frey Lake, is home to one of America's premier trout streams, famous for record rainbow and brown trout. There are 18 public use areas around the lake. 15 parks are presently managed by the Corps of Engineers and two are operated by lease agreements with city governments and one with a local marina. The Corps uses the master plan to best manage the lake's resources. It's the strategic document that guides the comprehensive management and development of recreational, natural, and cultural resources. The master plan is not intended to address the specifics of regional water quality, shoreline management, or water level management, but merely provide a vision for how the lake should look in the future. The last revision of the Greer's Ferry Master Plan was approved on January 26, 1976, and since then, needs have changed and demands have increased. It is vital that the Corps once again revise the Master Plan to allow us to address change and prepare for increasing demands. No single agency has complete oversight of the lake, and no two visitors share the same vision of how the lake should look in 20 years, but we believe all have its best interest at heart. We want your input. In the near future, the Corps intends to host several scoping workshops. This is your opportunity to let us know how you would like the lake to be managed in the future and to provide your input to the master plan vision for future land use of Greer's Ferry Lake. So let's go through the land classifications and what they mean. There are five major land classifications, project operations, high density recreation, mitigation, environmentally sensitive, and multiple resource management lands. Project operations are those lands used solely for the operation of the lake. This includes those areas required for the dam, spillway, switchyard, offices, and maintenance facilities. High density recreation lands are currently planned or could be developed in the future for high use recreational activities for the visiting public. This may include day use areas and or campgrounds as well as areas for commercial business on project lands such as fuel service and boat rentals. Mitigation land was acquired specifically for the purposes of offsetting losses associated with development of the project area. There are currently no lands classified as mitigation land. Environmentally sensitive area land is where scientific, ecological, cultural, or aesthetic features have been identified and must not be negatively impacted. Uses such as agricultural, grazing, or mowing activities that may impact natural resources are not allowed on these lands. The multiple resource management classification allows for a particular use but has the potential for other uses on these lands. These are broken down to include the following. Low density recreation includes lands with little development that could support passive public use like primitive camping, fishing, hunting, trails, wildlife viewing, shoreline use permits, and more. In the shoreline management plan, this area could include zoning for limited development areas like resort docks, boat docks, and other shoreline uses. 
Wildlife management land is designated for stewardship of fish and wildlife resources. Management programs to improve forest, range, and wildlife are allowed in this land classification. Vegetative management land provides stewardship of forest, prairie, and other native vegetative cover to act as a filter between land and lake. Future or inactive recreation areas have potential for future recreational development or are areas that are closed. Until there is an opportunity to develop or reopen these areas, they will be managed for multiple resources. We've also added a water surface classification to help address safety concerns on the lake. Restricted surface waters are for project operations, safety and security purposes, such as near Greer's Ferry Dam, municipal water intakes, and designated swimming areas. Designated no-wake areas protect environmentally sensitive shorelines, recreational water access from disturbance, and for public safety. These are found near marinas and boat launching ramps. Fish and wildlife sanctuary areas are where annual or seasonal restrictions are in place to protect fish and wildlife species during migration, resting, feeding, nesting, and or spawning. Open recreation areas are waters available for year-round or seasonal water-based recreation. In addition to land and water classifications, easements on lands around the lake are very important. Easements were acquired for specific purposes and do not convey the same rights or ownership to the Corps as other lands. Operations easement. We retain rights to these lands necessary for project operations. There are currently no operations easement lands at Greer's Ferry Lake. Flowage easement. We retain the right to inundate these lands for project operations, such as a high water event. Conservation easement. We retain the rights to lands for aesthetic, recreation, and environmental benefits. There are currently no conservation easement lands at Greer's Ferry Lake. Our team is working hard planning and coordinating the scoping workshops. I encourage you to read the materials available, attend one of the workshops, ask questions, and make comments. We are encouraging all of you to be a part of this process and help us in completing this revision. The public workshops will be held in mid-September. Exact dates, times, and locations can be found on the Greer's Ferry Master Plan website. During this time, the Corps will be outlining the process for submitting your input regarding the Greer's Ferry Master Plan revision. Comment period will open September 8. Comments must be submitted by October 13. Once all comments are received, the team will review and process all of your input. Thank you for your involvement. The revision process is important to us and to you for the future of Greer's Ferry Lake.